back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So this is uh, what Meatloaf '89, uh, and this is the first Meatloaf uh, after the big summer bash down at Bar Z. So uh, let me just tell you that it was just an absolutely fantastic event, and um, um, it's going to do nothing but grow from here. It was it was very impressive, and it was. Uh, uh, very exciting to meet all the other YouTubers face to face and, uh, and also meet our fans. And um, so I just wanted to talk a little bit about that and that um, the whole reason for the event was you guys out there, okay? We're just some guys working in our shop and uh, without the fans and the viewers, uh, we're just guys working in the shop. That's all we are. And uh, you have made it very special for us uh, to have events like this and uh, to meet you guys and uh, share our knowledge with it and you're excited about it and uh, this is the feedback that, uh, that makes this all work. So uh, it's absolutely wonderful. And, um, and I know for myself and talking with some of the other uh, YouTube creators, it's very humbling uh, that you guys uh, um, you know, are so excited about all this stuff that we do. So, uh, I, uh, you know, I feel puny compared to some of the guys that I work with, and uh, and I I consider myself average. Okay, so uh, um, for for every one of us that's, that's showing what we're working on, there's 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 five hundred or a thousand other guys that are working away in shops that are ten times as good as we are. Okay, they just are not putting their stuff on the uh, on the internet. We just happen to be doing that. So, uh, um, you know, find these guys in your local area, get to know them, um, and uh, they'll, they'll uh, be wonderful resources. So, uh, we're I consider myself average. So, uh, please don't don't put us up on a on a tower or a stage. Uh, we just happen to be putting our stuff out on the internet. So. Uh, Anyway, I just wanted to put that out there and thank all you guys because really you make this, uh, you make all this possible, okay? So, uh, um, so let's get back and get back to the uh, Bar Z event. Um, I didn't shoot even a minute of video, so sorry guys. Um, Stan and Adam and all these other folks, uh, they shot a bunch of video and they're putting stuff up on the, on the web, so, uh, um, you know, if I did that, I'd just be repeating a lot of the same footage they would. And uh, so go check out Stan's channel, go check out Adam's channel, watch, watch me get my ass handed to me uh, by Adam on the four jaw. And uh, uh, it, was, it was great fun. So uh, check all that out. And then the other thing I wanted to mention was uh, these wonderful sponsors that stepped up. And... Um, um, they, uh, they stepped up in a big way, you know, they put a lot of stuff out there for us to give to you guys. Once again, it's all about the, uh, the fan base and the viewers, so these things that uh, we got the, um, the various companies to contribute, it was for you guys, okay? Sure, I came home with a couple little goodies or whatever, but uh, really it was all about, uh, um, you know, sharing with the viewership and, uh, and our, our YouTube community out there that's watching us. So. Uh, Anyway, it's enough yapping. This is actually a lot of talking for me. So uh, um, we're doing a meatloaf here. Uh, I got some flea market stuff. Uh, we're going to talk about a couple of things, and uh, we'll cruise around the shop and give you some updates and look at some new tools and uh, some things I uh, did a little horse trading for. And uh, it's the uh, meatloaf mix. So uh, let's get cracking. Okay, so uh, here's the. Uh this Sunday's uh, flea market uh, grabs and uh, a couple interesting items here. Um, so you got the, I got these two first. Um, this is a uh, Metatoyo uh, one to two uh, micrometer, uh, one ten thousandths with carbide faces. And uh, the box is a little rough, but uh, that's, that's okay. The micrometer's in great shape. Uh, the anvil faces look really good. And it's a ten thousandths reading with a vernier and a ratchet stop. So uh, this is their kind of uh, uh, their plain Jane version here. I actually like their lever locks. They make a good lever lock. Um, and and frankly, I prefer the uh, the lever lock to the to the 
the round one that's uh, that's in the body there. I kind of like the lever locks myself. So uh, anyway, seven bucks for that. That's uh, that's a pretty good deal. So uh, that I already have one. So this will go in my. Uh, I have a uh, uh, a box where I'm uh, I'm stowing stuff for a a future uh, endeavor. Um, similar to what Keith's doing uh, with the what's in your box thing. So that'll go in there. Uh, same guy had this. This is a little central tool company uh, inside, inside Mike. Uh, this is a tubular one here. And these are a little easier to handle than the, uh, the little skinny ones. So, uh, and it look, it's complete. It's got all the caps and it's got the wrench and everything and the little, uh, the little holder so you can fish it in there. So, uh, kind of nice. Um, and, uh, you know, it's got a, whatever it is, a one inch range. And uh, this one looks like it goes, let's see. I might go up for, you know, like from about two inches to eight inches, something like that. Just look, at, oh, it says four on there. But I think you can add them onto either end too. Maybe not, I don't know. I haven't played with it very much. Uh, 10 bucks for that little guy. So that was pretty good, uh, pretty good little buy. And uh, uh, I'm gonna move the camera and then uh, we'll come in a little closer and look at some, uh, a couple of these other things here. Okay. So uh, these guys here, actually, you know what? I'm going to come around the other side. These guys here, these are really nice. Um, these are uh, these are Lufkin. These are made by Lufkin, and I don't think I've seen a uh, a fine adjust like this. So most of the time, uh, what you see with a big caliper like this is kind of no adjust here, like this, right? You just kind of you kind of bop them on the uh, you bop them on the machine or on the table to adjust them. But this one's got this really slick little uh, little uh, little fine adjust here, which is really nice, and nothing's missing from it, so it's kind of cool. So that's a, uh, a Lufkin. Uh, you know, it'll clean up real nice here. It's not it's it's just light rust, so that'll just kind of buff off, and it'll be a be a nice looking caliper. So my now, I, honestly, I walked by these. Um, I saw them, and I said, "Hey, eh, okay, whatever. I got a big pair." Um, but my wife said, oh, hey, I got something for you, and <laughs> she ended up buying them and bringing them to me. Uh, and they're actually about two inches bigger than the big ones that I have, the ones that used to be on the bulletin board that kind of pinched my head uh, up there. Now, these are made by um, a WM uh, Mikesell Company, E-L-L, yeah, -L, right, my Mike's E-L-L, WM Mikesell Company. And uh, I, I've never heard of that company before. I haven't looked them up either. I, I, I wire brushed them a little bit. They're usually on the right hand leg. Uh, so um, I buffed uh, both sides there, not knowing which side was which. And uh, anyway, there was, there's the name there. And these are pretty good size. And uh, those will clean up pretty good and uh, be a nice wall hanger. So, uh, and then the last thing I got at the flea market was two uh, Mitsubishi DCL and R um, tool holders, and these hold the uh, Adam's favorite insert here, which is a CNMG. Um, you know, it's a negative geometry there, so you can see that the 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 pockets tip down. Well, these are nice. These have the really nice clamps here that the chips flow over really easily. Here, I like this style of uh, of clamp, and it's got a Torx to hold it. Three quarter inch shank on that one's got a little little chingadera on there, but no big deal. Anyway, these are made by Mitsubishi. Uh, Twenty bucks a piece for those, so uh, um, it's uh, you know these are good holder to have. You can put different inserts in it, and, uh, and then you don't have to swap inserts. You just grab a different tool block or whatever. So uh, um, yeah, I just gave one to Stan too. I had an extra one, so uh, um, I gave one to Stan, and then. Uh, the universe said, oh, hey, you need two more. Here you go. <laughs> so that was that. Okay, uh, moving on. Let's, uh, let's go look at something else. So I got plenty of stuff to look at here. All right. So a friend of mine at work, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Jim, um, was at a gun show recently, and uh, some guy had a uh, uh, a bunch of these apparently so um, now before you guys get all excited it's not exactly what you think it is here so it's Mark Winchester there hopefully you can see that Winchester ammunition and um, as we know uh, Winchester at one point was making small tools 
um, they sold ammunition and firearms in hardware stores and they said hey we got our stuff in these hardware stores let's make some tools too while we're at it now I don't know for sure if they ever made a little hammer like this because this is a copy of a of a Starrett toolmaker's hammer right and you know what it's actually pretty good it's not bad and uh, and I'll probably use that now here's the only problem is is that okay I kind of don't like that. You know, now I work with a lot of Chinese engineers and they're fine engineers and all that. Um, I just have a problem with, uh, with copycat stuff, okay? So, but I, I'll give it to them that they did a nice job on this hammer. It's, it's kind of well made, okay? For normally what wouldn't be well made, okay? So uh, this is my only problem is the copycat part of it, right? So uh, anyway, other, other than that, it's kind of a nice little hammer. It's in, uh, and it'll get some use. You got the little magnifying glass there. Maybe you can see, see through there. And uh, I don't know what he paid for it, but uh, probably wasn't much. But Jim, thank you very much. That's a nice little, uh, nice little hammer. And uh, <laughs> it'll, uh, yeah, maybe I'll grind that off so it doesn't bug me or something. I don't know. We'll uh, we'll figure. Oh, you know what? I'll fill that in with uh, with epoxy or something like that. So <laughs> anyway, thank you very much. That's a nice little gift. Okay. So the other the next thing I wanted to talk about was this here. Now I mixed some of this up the other day on camera, and um, uh, this is this you know it's Bondo with fiberglass in it. And uh, a couple of guys, car guys, uh, commented, they said, holy smokes, did you put a lot of hardener in that? And, you know, as I was uh, reading the comments, I was like, geez, I didn't think I, uh, I overdid the hardener because I read the instructions, right? You know, I don't mix this up all the time, so I don't really know, right? So I went back and looked, and, um, and uh, I read the instructions, and, um, and I said, yeah, I wasn't very far off. But then I looked at them again, and I go, you know what? These are bad instructions, okay? And uh, let's see. I wonder if I can zoom in on that. All right, well, I'm just gonna explain it. So, um, so it's, you know, for a golf ball size amount, okay, it says squeeze out, and what I thought it said was one and a quarter inch strip of hardener. So, but what it really is, is one singular quarter inch strip of hardener okay so the way it's written it's written badly I think uh, because I made a boo-boo right so of course I'm gonna blame them but uh, I think they should have used the word O-N-E one and then the fractional one quarter inch strip of hardener okay and the three inch diameter circle blah 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 okay so this just goes to show you that that technical writing is actually very difficult right so uh, the classic example of technical writing is um, write a set of instructions on how to tie your shoe. Okay, and you go, oh, you tie your shoe, what's the big deal, right? Okay, try writing that out, all right? It's not easy, and it turns into multiple pages and pages of basically arcane instructions on how to tie your shoe, right? That's why your mom shows you how to tie your shoe. But it's very simple, you know, this is a very simple mistake to make here, and I made it. And I said, oh, one and a quarter, right? I see a measurement and I go one and a quarter, right? And, uh, but it was one little quarter inch strip. No, so no wonder that hardener kicked off so fast because I put about 10 times as much uh, hardener as uh, what was actually required. So uh, you guys were right. I mixed up a hot load there. And uh, now uh, I'm, you know, I don't use Bondo all the time. So uh, maybe the car guys will cut me a little bit of slack there. So, uh, uh, but uh, so. Yeah, so, I, you know, I always wondered, hey, how come I always run out of hardener so quick, you know? <laughs> but then again, they sell it at the store, right? They sell packages of just hardener, so I don't know, right? Whatever. So anyway, uh, car guys, thank you very much for pointing that out. I went back and looked at it and found the error of my ways. So, uh, um, you know, and that's your best learning is, uh, you know, when you make a boo-boo and you go back and look at it and study it and you learn from it. All right. Okay, so this next one... Um, this is kind of interesting, actually. Um, you guys know I have a, uh, uh, a problem with the <laughs> levels in, uh, in instruments. Um, so I did a little horse trading with a guy on the web. Uh, his name's Bob Walton. And uh, anyway, Bob uh, heard me talking about uh, clinometers, okay? And he said, hey, I got this clinometer uh, that's been sitting in my closet for... Uh, 
a hundred years or whatever it was, and uh, and I'm not using it. So he says, "Are you interested in it?" And I said, "Yeah, sure. Let's talk, right?" So anyway, we did a little uh, little trading, and um, anyway, so as you can see, the the clinometer is here now. Okay. Now what this is is it's a um, it's a it's a measuring tool. Okay. So you can measure angles relative to other surfaces okay that doesn't have to be level necessarily so I'm gonna give you an example here so uh, now the, the mill is rel this mill is relatively level okay it's not hyper level I would say like a lathe uh, but it's it's reasonably level um, but a good example of how these things are used is uh, we might say we want to set up a particular angle here um, Actually, you know what? I probably should have put it at some standard angle, but that's okay. We'll just uh, I'll just kind of go through the motions here. Um, but what I want to do is I want to compare it to the machine reference, not not gravity necessarily, but the machine reference. Okay, and uh, so let's say you know this this mill is out of level a little bit, and what I care about is that this is correctly oriented in an angular. Uh, way to the machine not to not to gravity okay so but we can use gravity as our reference okay and um, so uh, this is pretty cool so it has a uh, you can release this and you can rotate this drum and then there's a scale here that we read through the window here and I'm gonna make sure I set it on zero here to start with we're gonna set it on zero okay and we get zero and we get zero and this reads to uh, minutes of angle okay so uh, each one of these little divisions here is is one minute of angle okay and then we have degrees here so what we're gonna do we'll set it on the machine first and um, you see it's got two bases here that's connected with a flexure okay and I also happen to like flexures too so uh, let's uh, let's so what we're gonna do this is our machine reference here we're gonna we're gonna level it here and I'm looking at this bubble up here and this is a fairly sensitive bubble up here. And you would calibrate this kind of in the normal fashion. Actually, that you would calibrate a level. Okay, that's pretty good right there. Okay. So, but we're still reading zero and zero here, right? Okay. So now what I'm going to do, make sure this is all going to show here, is I pop it up here. Okay on my angle reference surface and then I can release this and then I can kind of get close to being level make sure I engage and then I can dial in this drum okay that'll be good so what do I got? I got uh, five Seven degrees and uh, seven degrees fifty three minutes of angle. Okay, so but I can set up a ten degree. I, I can set up a standard angle as well. So I just happen to be measuring the difference between this surface and that surface, right? Um, uh, but I can also set this at a particular angle too, which is what makes this kind of neat. So on bigger machine tools and things like that, if you want to set some uh, something up, uh, an angle plate or whatever, uh, you can use a clinometer to uh, to get those references, and uh, they're pretty accurate. Now this is a uh, I would call it a um, you know kind of a shop grade one here, okay? But they have really fancy ones that will read to a fraction of an arc second, okay? This one reads direct to minutes, so uh, that's that's pretty good. A minute of angle, and um, but a fraction of an arc second. Uh, well, we know how small arc seconds are. So anyway, Bob, thank you very much. This is a fun. Uh, this is a fun instrument to play with here, and uh, uh, it was a pleasure uh, doing a little horse trading with you there. And uh, enjoy the the goodie box that I sent you. Uh, that's got stuff in it. So uh, thanks a lot. Well, while we're on the subject of hammers here, uh, another one uh, flew out of the sky and landed in my lap here. And uh, this one comes to us from uh, Bob Walton. And uh, he's the guy that sent me the, the drum clinometer that you guys just saw. And this is, I guess uh, Bob does uh, some engraving work. And this is an engraver's hammer. 
and uh, with the classic uh, engraver's uh, handle. Um, I don't know what they call this particular one. Um, this one's made in uh, West Germany here and it uh, looks like it's seen a little bit of use too, uh, which is great. It's got, uh, um, it's got some character. Um, I always like to see tools that get used, right? Um, you know, they have the owner's wear on them and uh, to me that's, uh, that's the best you can, uh, you can find there. Anyway, uh, Bob, thank you very much. A nice little hammer. Um, I have ones kind of like this, uh, a little different. Uh, that somebody sent me. Um, so it's an engraver, well, it's a jewelry hammer, but it's a little different than this. So this is an engraver's hammer here. So um, anyway, thanks. That was great. I love it. All right, so we got a little Taft Pierce update here. Um, I've actually run the spindle now. I've got, um, let me get on this side here. Um, oh, you like my shirt? It's my uh, Bar Z shirt from the, uh, the Summer Bash. So uh, I put an overload device in here and uh, I've done some rewiring here um, and then I, I put a cord on it since uh, um, I don't have three phase out in the, in the center of the shop I have to string it over uh, uh, to another spot. Anyway, so I'm going through this and I ran the spindle but I noticed that the uh, uh, when I kind of loaded the spindle up just with my fingers a little bit that it bogged a little bit so uh, what that what that meant to me is gee I had to check and make sure that it's wired for the correct voltage I have 208 three phase here in my shop um, and so I want to double check the uh, the motor uh, voltage wiring and sure enough I popped it open and looked at it and it's actually wired for uh, uh, the higher voltage which is I think 460 yeah 460 voltage so uh, it's um, uh, it still turns, but uh, I'm, it, it, I'm, I'm not getting uh, I'm not getting what I suppose I'm supposed to out of that. So uh, anyway, uh, I'm going to swap the, uh, the motor wiring around here. It's got uh, these guys did a really nice job. They use this um, um, they're they're lugged and the, the lugs are bolted and then they're wrapped with this uh, self fusing uh, uh, insulation tape. You know, back in 1965 when this thing was put together. Um, anyway, so that stuff is it's still resilient, but it's it's solid and the, the, the insulation is still good. Anyway, so I'm fiddling around with that, and um, so so far so good. I cleaned the, the ways and I put new uh, balls in the uh, the roller ways here. And uh, Chuck came out uh, the other day, and yeah, he was uh, he was all jealous. Uh, because uh, how easy this thing moves compared to his brown and sharp. So uh, um, anyway, so a little update on that. Anyway, I was teasing Chuck. <laughs> also, uh, my, my buddy Bob Walton, uh, he sent me some uh, uh, some nice rubber isolator feet here, which will uh, will go pretty good. And I don't know if it's, yeah, it's probably not in the picture, but there's some big studs here uh, for leveling this. But and these have a nice pocket in them that that stud will go right in. And uh, so we can kind of rubber isolate this from the concrete, which should, uh, should be pretty nice, actually. So, Bob, once again, thank you, buddy. That's uh, that's a very useful, uh, excuse me, a very useful uh, little gift there. Let's see who makes these things. Yeah, there's no maker on them, huh? Go figure. Well, okay, yeah, you, you think they uh, you think they put their damn uh, their damn name on there? Go figure. Yeah, he says, uh, new shoes for your calf Pierce. <laughs> Anyway, thanks, Bob. A uh, little update on the uh, on the Pat Pierce there. So uh, we're going to be grinding real soon.